So Aaron, what are we looking at? Yeah, so we're iSpace. We're a Japanese lunar exploration company. We're making robotics for lunar exploration. So these are our technology. We have a lander which will go to the moon to carry these rovers which will explore the surface of the moon. Now, I think the Chinese have already gone to the far side of the moon, so obviously that's taken. That's right. So we're actually planning to go to the near side of the moon. At first, we were going to stay um, somewhere in the middle, but eventually we want to go to the polar side because in the poles, that's where the water is frozen in the soil, and we want to be able to identify where those resources are. All right. So what are you going to be looking for besides frozen water? For water? Well, besides, uh, besides the water. Uh, well, water is our main uh, interest because water is what can be divided into hydrogen and oxygen. It can be used for fuel as well as life support. And so it'll enable for uh, industry to be able to establish on the moon. All right, so baby steps here. We're actually looking for a fuel source on the moon. You're going to try and identify that and become the gas station for anybody who wants to set up a settlement. Yes, that's okay. a long-term view is to be able to have a waypoint to deeper space, um, but also for the infrastructure that exists between the Earth and the moon as well. Okay, this is obviously a scale model. How big is the real thing? <laughs> so this is a one-fifth size scale. Um, the real thing is about three meters tall. Is that uh, the rover above the regular size? This is one by one scale. This one is the actual size. That's the actual size. Yeah, that's all you need. Which makes me wonder, though, why are you at the consumer electronics show if you're going to the moon? Right. So there's a lot of opportunities for the consumer goods. So, for example, we brought, uh, we're unveiling our virtual reality application here today. And um, virtual reality, we have a game where you can experience our lunar mission firsthand. And you can see what it's like to land a, a lander, to explore the rover, and all the difficulty that's involved. We would like for a company like a gaming company or a virtual reality company to purchase the rights when we actually get lunar imagery on the moon so they can be the only ones that own real lunar imagery for their games or for their virtual reality, that kind of thing. Oh, or maybe a movie company. Movie companies, any kind of entertainment companies. I mean, all kinds of companies, there's opportunities, but entertainment would be really, really cool for lunar imagery. Question, how do you get it up there? Who are you going to use? So we've already purchased two flights with SpaceX. The first one's next year in mid-2020, and the second mission will be in mid-2021. So Elon Musk, again, changing everything. So this is an Elon Musk type of situation. Well, we purchased his flights, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So I assume then that the reason why you want to sell the video that you would get from the moon to an entertainment company, whether it be a film production company or a video game maker, is this is a means of financing this project. Exactly. So we're a private company. So we're looking for sponsors or we're looking for companies to partner with who can help us to fund our subsequent missions. So we raised $100 million in our Series A last year, which is going to fund our first two missions. But we're looking for partners and customers who will uh, be able to fund our subsequent missions after that. So it costs 50 million bucks to put something like that on the moon. Roughly at 50 million dollars for a space for a lunar mission. Um, we're we've been able to downsize the traditional size of, of, uh, of our equipment, so we're making very small, low cost landers and rovers. And also, you know, a company like SpaceX, they provide very low cost launches. So we've been able to do it in under 50 million. Companies like SpaceX and others who are getting into the more commercial oriented space have been using off the shelf parts and products as opposed to what NASA had to do for the first moon landing, which was make everything the first time around. That's exactly right. And actually, our rover is made with a lot of consumer off-the-shelf products as well. Um, one of our sponsors when we were doing the Google Lunar X Prize previously was a Japanese glue manufacturer who glued on our solar panels. And um, yeah, and also uh, one of our companies was Zoff, which is, uh, my glasses actually is Zoff, the Japanese glasses company. Their material is made out of the same material as the wheels for... Um, and it's a good like marketing opportunity for these companies to be able to do tie-ups with us. So those were, that was our previous sponsorship model. Now we're looking for new sponsors who want to do some kind of technology collaboration with us. And consumer companies are very great opportunities because they there's many things they can do with marketing um, before we even launch as well. Okay, interesting. Um, I want that sticker for my. Uh Computer. You want the sticker for your I computer. computer? I want to be the first guy to have a Hakuto R. Yes, so Hakuto, Hakuto R is the name of our program for these first two missions. When we were doing the Google Lunar X Prize, it was called Hakuto. Team Hakuto is a Japanese team for that competition. Now that we're doing these first two missions on our own, Hakuto R stands for Hakuto Reboot. So we're re rebooting Hakuto, and we're we're doing these first two missions. What does Hakuto mean? So Hakuto is White Rabbit in Japanese, and they have a. That makes sense because I was going to say that looks like Louise's bunny years on Bob's Burgers, so okay. So just like Americans see a man on the moon, uh, the Japanese have a kind of a local folk tale that there's a white rabbit existing on the moon. So that's the background for the for the name. Viva! Las Vegas.